Hello and welcome everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right? If you've ever forgot what day it is, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We're going to go ahead and trade this market. Great to see a whole bunch of returning faces. I got a special guest in the back, plus 13. Let's roll. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas law, that phrase. All right, folks, we are back. And yes, apparently it's Tuesday. Uh, having a little fun in the back. Anyway, happy Tuesday. It's good to see a whole bunch of returning faces. We are back for day two of big earnings week. So let's see what we can go ahead and extract from this market. Of course, we did have a big earning yesterday. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. First, I'm going to bring on 13. 13, how are you doing here today? Doing all right. How's everybody on this Friday morning? Oh, it's Tuesday, right? <laughs> well done, 13. <laughs> well done. And Andy from Mighty Soldiers Trades. How are you doing today, Andy? Keep with the theme. Happy hump day, everyone. <laughs> okay. And nice 65 EMA shirt. I'm sure we're going to be talking about the 65 EMA today. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing we're going to talk about here is the SPY. Um, had a nice little power candle yesterday, continuing to trade up. Now we are a little soft in the pre-market here today, but really nothing to uh, nothing to get crazy about or trading back in. We'll see what happens around the opening print if we continue to sell off or if we find some support. Um, at this point, I'm kind of just waiting to see if there's a big market reversal. I'm kind of waiting to see if there's a outsized reaction to any of these earnings. And so far from the market, there really hasn't been. Uh, some of the stocks have reacted pretty significantly, but the indexes themselves seem kind of normal. Um, one of the things that we discussed in happy hour was if you're potentially trying to uh, trade some of these high flyers to the downside, one of the ways to attack that would be to long an inverse ETF and maybe kind of play it as a basket. So we'll keep an eye on on some of those things uh, here today. Um, 13 or Andy, did you have anything that you wanted to cover about the SPY before I move on to SMCI here? The SPY is a monster, Ryan. It's been amazing. I got some pretty nice profit off it yesterday, but I just have to let everybody know before we even go into this that uh, last time, I don't know what penny stock it was, but I had to cut that loss. So I want to start this off by letting everybody know that that the last trade that looked like it could have been great, uh, I had to cut that loss. So Okay. Hey, that's what that's what happens sometimes with the market. You look like you're in a really good position and then bang, the situation changes and you need to readjust. That's what makes uh, a nimble trader or that being nimble is a requirement of a trader, I should say. So good job there. Um, keeping on that theme, Andy, um, when we signed off yesterday, I actually had a trade on RVSN for Rail Vision. Um, as soon as we signed off there, it took a little bit of a dip, but didn't break down and then actually rocketed and, and took off. So I was able to close that trade for profit. So thankfully, uh, patience paid off in that rail vision one. I know we were looking for a move earlier, didn't get it till a little bit later, but nonetheless, one of the things that I was attempting to do, one of the things I identified from last week about maybe stopping out of some of these a little too early only to watch them go, I was actually able to adjust that and then make a positive trade on that yesterday. So I'm looking to carry that forward uh, here today. 13, anything else on the SPY that you want to talk about? Well, we are a little bit uh, down off the high from yesterday that we made. And uh, I was looking at UPS's earnings. Uh, they're down. And we've uh, discussed before how FedEx and UPS can kind of uh, be a, a gauge on the strength mm -hmm. of the economy. So uh, with that in mind, I went over to look at FedEx's. And you know they're looking like they have a, a broadening wedge pattern to the downside forming. Uh, this could be our indicator that uh, uh, there's some uh, some weakness. So uh, I'm looking to see what uh, we get as a result from these uh, from UPS's earnings. Yeah, it's, it's I, going down now. So yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that because uh, this was something that I was kind of looking at too. I also saw a report here from Bloomberg that they're laying off 12,000 employees, looking to free up a billion dollars. Uh, to me, that actually tells me that the economy that we're being told is humming along so nicely probably isn't. That there's actually some things under the hood um, that are affecting this. So good call there on UPS. I don't have a trade lined up for this one. So 
I'm not, you know, I, I don't know that I'm going to trade this here today, but I do watch these. And to your point, it's not only UPS, it's also FDX that we watch for to kind of gauge the sentiment of the consumer. So that's a really good call. We'll watch that out today. I would love to hear what anyone else thinks about a uh, about UPS, its trading or FDX uh, for that matter. Um, the big one that I wanted to cover here is SMCI, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the movers tool and take a look at some of the other movers that are likely to be in play here for today. Uh, if we take a look at SMCI, you can see that this stock just absolutely massive run recently. Now, they reported earnings yesterday. Those earnings were positive. The big thing here on SMCI is that if you recall, on January 19th, they actually pre-released their guidance, and that popped it. So from that point forward, from January 19th, Let's see, uh, from the close of the day before till right now, stock is up 70%. It was actually up higher this morning. So this stock is on a huge run. Look at the RSI. We're talking almost an 87 RSI value on the daily. This thing is hot. And so maybe there's going to be kind of like a gap and go or a continuation trade here. But I would just caution everybody, hey, look how far we've run in such a short amount of time. The trade on SMCI today, especially depending on how the market behaves, might be to the downside. Uh, again, no position here. One of the things that I wanted to watch, they did report earnings. They're moving here up 10%, almost 10.5% here this morning. Um, but watch for this to come back in if it can't hold. One of the other themes that we discussed in the happy hour is that if we want to see what is actually going to signal a market reversal, it might be stocks beating earnings and then trading poorly, as opposed to a stock missing earnings, getting penalized for it, and then maybe catching a bid and bouncing. Instead, we want to see some of these stocks report good earnings and then trade down. That would tell us that maybe we're closer to a market reversal. That would help with uh, the people trying to take profit to sell. If you have all these buyers start coming in because they had good earnings, gives a lot of people that want to take profit away out. You got that right. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the movers tool. And then I'll take a look at any of the stocks that you folks want. And we'll also hit the chat as well. Um, so first one here, let me go ahead and fix the chart here. We were taking a look at SMCI. First one here, let me get to an intraday chart. Uh, ITRM, this is Iterum Therapeutics. This stock popped just over 320 earlier. Now it's really starting to bleed back some of those gains here in the pre-market, but it's doing a decent job finding a base. So maybe a trade against 220 here on a risk to the downside for a potential fill back up to the VWAP, a gap fill back up to the VWAP, looking at about 50 cents here. So that would actually be a pretty good trade if this materializes. Definitely want to keep this one uh, on the watch list here. Again, no position here in the pre-market or anything. Um, we did have a PR here this morning. Iterum Therapeutics announces positive top line results from its phase three clinical trial of one of its drugs uh, for urinary tract infections. So some phase three data here on ITRM. Um, 13, I know you followed some of these uh, therapeutic stocks after some of their trials. Any insight from the phase three trial that ITRM has? So I don't know what they're uh, planning to do to bring their product to market, but that's usually you know a costly endeavor. Uh, phase three is is one I, I consider to be a sell the news uh, event in these because that's the final uh, phase of their uh, their clinical trials. Then uh, they're gonna they're gonna look for uh, approval and uh, have, get the, their product brought to market. Uh, that takes time. That takes money. But to, uh, phase three is usually where I want to uh, kind of ring the register on these because uh, that means that their their, their product is good. Uh, it, it has uh, you know great potential. And uh, it's likely going to make money, but there's going to probably be some offerings or some kind of uh, uh, behind the scenes uh, deal making in order to get this brought to market. Okay, good stuff there. So sell the news potentially on phase three. We've seen that before on some of these PRs too. So let's keep that in mind for ITRM. Uh, even while we're talking here, the list in the order here are shifting around. So let's cover them here real quick. Uh, PXLW, this is Pixel Works. This is definitely one that we've traded here before. This actually just um, is this just started trading higher in terms of a change percent than ITRM did pop as high as what 221 it looks like we've come back in we broke beneath the view app this looks like it's trying to find its intraday near-term bottom we'll see where that actually ends up 
uh, settling here. Did have a PR here this morning. Walt Disney Studios and Pixel Works enter into a first of its kind multi-year agreement to expand the reach of true cut motion technology. So nice little PR there for Pixel Works driving it plus 21% here in the pre-market. Uh, this one, we've seen this trade before. Uh, we've seen this up here on the relative volume scanner and all of that. So probably going to do technical trades on this one. Definitely one to keep on watch today. Uh, next is, and if you guys have anything you want to add to any of these, please feel free to interrupt me. Uh, next, this is what we were just talking about. This was a trade from yesterday. This is actually a trade from several days in the past. Um, RVSN has really kind of been popping recently. Uh, we had a nice move yesterday in the afternoon. My God, Cleo, come on. I uh, had a nice move in the afternoon yesterday, and it is popping to those highs here today. So currently at about 1852, um, what we said yesterday is this is in play until it isn't anymore, and this is just refusing to go away. We continue to get pops. We continue to get volume trading these names every single day, um, and it looks like we're getting it again here today. So I would be careful with Rail Vision just because it is also extended and it's been doing this a lot, but... This has been working every day, so we're going to trade it and keep an eye on it until it no longer works. Did you have any uh, line on Rail Vision? I, I know we talked about this being part of the infrastructure spending and, and that stuff uh, before, maybe some of that money moving into Rail Vision, but anything else on, on RVSN? So we broke a new high just now, Ryan. I was When you first brought this up, I was like, we should pull up that chart. This thing's looking pretty sweet. And uh, by the way, you speak. <laughs> Your bird, uh, I think that my bird really loves hearing. You said Cleo? Is that? Yes, Cleo. Yeah, Marty Bird really uh, loves hearing Cleo because he's being quiet and he's normally not quiet. Okay. Well, um, that, that wouldn't surprise me. My bird tries to talk to any other bird it can, no matter its size, which is kind of frightening, but uh, he's protected. So I'm, I'm not surprised to hear that. The birds love to talk to each other. Cleo has a lot to say this morning. Um, real quick here, comment here from Jay, uh, Pally, ONMD, et cetera. seems like yesterday's winners, today's losers too hard for me. Jay, that's exactly right. And, and it's one of the reasons why outlining some of these winners from yesterday, just trading vehicles, right? I mean, it would have been awesome for me to keep RVS on overnight, but I had no thesis or no plan to do so. So I used it as a trading vehicle, got my money and we'll set up again here today. Uh, the trades, as we've discussed a number of times, trades that I prefer are ones that I can stay in for a while. Uh, some of those swings are are still working. Um, in fact, you know, we might as well talk about uh, here. Let me go ahead and load up this and then this. Uh, we'll talk about trade the pool here real quick because I am still carrying the same two positions, by the way. Of course, Trade the Pool sponsors live trading here, the best prop firm out there. You can get up to 260K in buying power. So use this if you need help getting over that 25K limit uh, or threshold. Now, um, the swings that I'm carrying here are Zim. Um, now, Zim's kind of flat here in the pre-market. We're still doing all right. I know we had a nice little pop yesterday, but we didn't continue to run. And then TGTX, which is actually had a really nice day yesterday, traded up all day after being weak around the open and is up here in the pre-market. So the two swings in the account, which I prefer to do, are still rocking, still rocking. Can't hear you, Ryan. Yeah, we Speaking just lost of, your uh, Yep, sorry about rocking. that. Go ahead. Speaking of rocking, that RVSN, man, that thing is definitely rocking right now. This thing looks like it's going to try and take 19. We shall see. Um, about you, but I'm really cautious about these before market open because a lot of times they'll look just like this. And as soon as market open hits, they will just hit the bid and keep pushing down the whole day. Yep. I'm right there with you. I don't want to touch this until we get uh, the market open first. So uh, that takes care of RVSN. We've got several of these. Uh, Mots, another one here. This popped as high as 170. This extremely weak, though. Uh, this is really giving everything back here. Um, ICCM, this is another one here doing the same deal, right? Popped on a PR and then came all the way back into 150 here. US FDA grants Ice Cure Medicals appeal, reopens de novo classification request for marketing authorization of ProSense for early stage breast cancer. So there's your PR here in ICCM. We've seen this one pop and drop a number of times. So be careful with this. We've actually already seen it here today. A little more about ICCM. Mm -hmm. uh, I read into that uh, that appeal that they're doing. So 
they have uh, uh, the, the company's got a five year data set that's going to uh, be available in February uh, from their ICE 3 study. They're going to try to get that together and submit it by April. So I think there's some future catalysts coming up with this. Uh, Friday, I'm sorry, February might not be so big because that's uh, when uh, their, their uh, patient that they were uh, studying the, uh, the results of the testing on um, is going to be uh, finished with their, their trial in February. And then April is when they're trying to get the data submitted to FDA. So just a couple of, uh, of uh, dates or months to, uh, to be on watch for with this one. Now, would you try front running any of those data prints or are you just kind of reacting to them? Uh, I don't think I'd try to front run them. Me either. And it's the, it's it's good to know those because you'll you mm -hmm. can kind of plan out how this might react. But I'm with you there. I I wouldn't play those either. Um, another stock that I really quickly wanted to talk about, and then uh, I'm going to save GM for you, thirteen, if that's all right. You brought that to my attention here this morning. If you want to talk okay. about GM, uh, but one of the other stocks that we're seeing here is Save, and this is one that we have been talking about quite a bit recently. Save popped in the pre market here after JetBlue reported its earnings, and apparently didn't mention Save at all in the earnings print. So save getting some action. That's why you're seeing a pop here. We'll see if there's another trade here on safe. Do you have anything else on safe or did you just want to go to GM? Um, I, the only thing I had on save other than that expedited appeal uh, was I think this is kind of squeezing shorts because there's a, a pretty significant short interest on this with us over six days to cover. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think because uh, this news coming out kind of killing some shorts, uh, I think we're seeing a squeeze in addition to the headline. Okay, good stuff. All right, let's go to GM. Now, 13, um, GM is popping here. We were just mm -hmm. under about 35 yesterday, uh, currently printing 37.90. We were above 38 here, as high as 38.50. Uh, for the catalyst here, General Motors shares are trading higher after the company reported better than expected Q4 financial results and issued a guidance above estimates. What's going on here with GM? Yeah, so the uh, the guidance above estimates, they see uh, 2024 adjusted EPS uh, in the range of 850 to 950 versus the estimate of 783. So that's a pretty big uh, raise in their guide. Uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is uh, their conference call is uh, coming out is they're seeing uh, improved cell costs uh, by uh, lower raw, raw material prices, and that's for their uh, batteries. Uh, GM is one of the uh, early adopters for uh, EVs. They've had, uh, you know, hybrids and I'm sorry, not hybrids. They've had plug-in vehicles and, uh, and EVs longer than you know, any of the other uh, big manufacturers like Ford and, and uh, Stellantis. Uh, they're really the only competitor with Tesla for the longest time until some other EVs came in. So the fact that they're seeing lowered costs in their material prices is encouraging, uh, but I don't have a whole lot uh, other than that. I noticed that their uh, EPS was, was a much bigger guy than before. So uh, that's the reason why it's moving today. Could move Maybe maybe we'll see forty, but don't don't quote me on that. Yeah, and you know the other thing that I saw here uh, in the newsfeed here, Ford and GM expect EVs will stall for a while, which we've yep. been talking about. We've been talking about that quite a bit as a sector, but Stellantis, Tesla, and WorkSport don't think that will be the case. So it seems like. Uh, you know, the market's telling us one thing, the stock prices of some of these stocks are telling us one thing, but some of these companies are still disagreeing with each other uh, on the future of this market. So I think there's still going to be some back and forth. I'm going to let the market tell me personally, then instead of just listening to any specific company or anything like that, market will sniff out what the truth is here. Um, okay. Do you guys have anything else? Got about five minutes till we open here. Is there anything else that you want me to cover before I start taking tickers from our chat? Um, Andy, if you don't have anything, the only other stuff I was looking looking at was um, uh, Agrify. Somebody got a large, like almost fifty percent stake in that, but that's a penny, uh, you know, under a dollar, so not really too interested in that. And then uh, ATPC, I don't know where where that went, uh, but that was at the top of the uh, uh, the movers this morning. No news. AP what was the ticker again. I'm sorry. ATPC. ATPC. Yeah, this one had a, a big move this morning. Uh, no news, no Sherry purchases. Or they had a Sherry purchase program that was old news back in November. I, I don't know what this is running on. It, it has to be on something old because there's not. it doesn't have a low float, so I don't know what this is moving on. Yeah, well, first of all, the reason that this isn't appearing on the movers tool and was earlier is because it's flirting with that $1 threshold. Yeah. Um, 
it, my filters are set up here to not show stocks under a dollar. So this was earlier as this was spiking above 140. This was absolutely on the list, but it's no longer there because it's under a dollar. Uh, to your point about the share structure there, the news, not really sure what's driving it. To me, that tells me that this is nothing more than a technical trade and the technicals are what have to guide you. Otherwise, you're kind of just trading on hopes and dreams. Yeah, I like a market sniper's uh, take on rail vision and because, you know, that's exactly what it is. And I, I'm surprised at myself that I didn't, you know, put these two pieces together. We've been having a lot of train accidents. The past year, we've mm -hmm. had a large number of train accidents. So this is very, very relevant. And I'm sure it's, it's more than just the uh, uh, infrastructure bill that's fueling this. It's other things, too, like, you know, the need for better rail safety. Right. You're not right. talking about the bright line, are you? Uh, there's several that uh, happened last uh, year. I, the one I uh, remember mostly was, uh, I think it was in Ohio, where there's a bunch of chemical spills. Is that the one you're referring to? Oh, right? yeah. oh no, the yeah. bright line's going like 120 mile an hour here in Florida, and people are still crossing the tracks and just getting <laughs> But that's Florida, so that makes sense. Florida man gets hit by high-speed rail. It's a headline I expect to see any day now. Oh, I, I'm incredibly cautious going over those tracks. You guys, that is insane. It's... Uh, it's a bit of an adrenaline rush just to cross tracks here. Oh man, I can imagine. I, I, I mean, went, I mean, you should always, you should always be careful about crossing tracks. I, I've been on uh, the bullet train in Japan, and that that was. It's amazing to see to have to be in there and have the other train on the opposite track go past you. You have a whole like you know 15, 20 car train passing you in a couple seconds. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I, I've act, I've never been on one of those bullet trains myself, but man, I've heard some pretty crazy stories about people that have pretty cool experience, no doubt. Yeah, they actually um, had to put in a, a rail, uh, you know, the same thing that blocks the cars. They had to put one in for the pedestrians as well because people just kept on trying to cross the track. I learned that at such a young age, it baffles me that people still can't look both ways before crossing the street or the tracks uh, for that one, for that, uh, for that matter. Jay Rice mentioning here, is it worth 1 to 19, the train accidents? And this is kind of what I'm saying. I would imagine not. No. Um, and I would imagine that you're probably getting this extended run because of these multiple things that are affecting it. Um, that from these multiple things that are affecting it. So I don't know. Um, I don't think that it's worth this up here. This, but again, uh, as far as strategy goes, this is why you don't hold it overnight. Now, to your point about offerings can happen at any time, that's true. Um, most of the offerings that I see happen after hours or in the pre-market. So I figure that if we can trade it in the session, that's really our only, uh, our only attempt at that. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, Got about 45 seconds, 45 seconds. Okay. So we're pretty much already open. Let me go ahead and get my scanner up here and let's take a look at what we can find. When we start talking about trade setups and getting into them, I will flip over to the trade, the pool broker, and we will actually trade them. So get ready, folks. Good luck. Have a great day. Wisc calling PTPI. I did see that earlier on the list, but we didn't cover it. Dollar fifty stock here, up about nine percent. We'll see what happens when we open. All right, good luck, everybody. Oh, we traded this before. PTPI. Yes, we have. Yeah. Still got my levels on that one. Real Vision pulling. All right, and we are open. Let's get it, folks. Well, I guess I'm not going to get my fill in IDAI. What was what are you looking at here, 13? I just want to get into this at all. Uh, so I have it. Uh, I have an, an order to start at 145. OK, that's ticker IDAI. Mm -hmm. we, if you look at INOD, that thing, I missed my opportunity to get back in this. OK, uh, sorry. I'm i know sorry i keep making it bounce all over the place uh this was we were talking about this yesterday uh because it was uh it went underneath 10 a pretty good amount and then it popped up to almost 11. and we were talking about how this was a uh broadening wedge formation uh or, or megaphone pattern and it could break out some well it broke out today uh now we're making new uh what is this? making new highs from uh since september so here is your INOD chart. INOD did pop in the pre-market. Now, I didn't see any news on that. Maybe just continuation from yesterday. Looks yeah, like I just think it's... Really yeah, just, 
this is a bit of a technical uh, move. It's coming back in. I really want this to come in uh, close to the 925 so I can reload. Okay. There you go. 925. Looks like your buy spot here. Trading back down to 11. I nod. Uh, guess what? Rail vision on the relative volume scanner again, popping to new highs here on RVSN. So we got 1930 there. Let me bring that up on another chart here. At this point now, really feel like this needs to pull. There's just really no entry on a stock that's just running away at this point. At least not for me. The ATPC, maybe that is trying to, nope, that is that first move here was down. Thought that might try to take a dollar right out of the gate, but does not have the strength for that. ITRM from our list, just kind of holding in there. PTPI, that popped a little bit, but really hasn't taken off. Rail vision, really the big mover here out of the gate. As far as the smaller Look at the future. Looking at the futures here, they just popped straight to the VWAP, popped an upper shadow, and looks like we could get a rejection uh, sitting right at that VWAP right now. Okay, uh, Andy, one of the things that I did here real quick is I loaded up that 65 EMA that you talk about. That's the purple line that you're going to see on my chart. You know what? I should probably change that from purple because that's not easy to see out in internet land. Let's go ahead and make that a really lighter purple. That'll be easier to see. And you always use the four-hour chart for this, right? The EM, the um, I'm using EMA the... Yeah, I use the, the four-hour and I use the five-minute, 15-second daily and weekly. Okay. Okay, so I should be able, whatever you're seeing there, I should be able to visualize that here uh, on this chart here. So uh, SPY, that first move, I know we were leaking a little bit in the pre-market. We are curling up out of the gate. One of the things that was interesting here, uh, Apple, of course, Apple reports Thursday this week after hours. Uh, take a look at Apple here, intraday Shot. chart. First move out of the gate is good. What was that, 13, sorry? Shot, S-H-O-T. That just had a pop out of the gate. And I'm, I'm looking to see what this is about. And it looks like we're going to go into a halt here on RVSN. Yeah, it does. 2129, the high print here. It looks like they're not holding it, so maybe it doesn't halt here. Uh, uh, let, me, let, me go, let me go back to RVSN. Yeah. No, whenever I see him lock up like that, though, I mean, I just expect that's going to be the way of the game for the day. Well, you get three halt ups, and then they start going down. And you remember, like, a couple minutes ago, we were all like, we don't like this at 17. <laughs> you really don't like it at 21. <laughs> or the next spot at 22 and change, wherever that spot is here. Here is our VSN. Now we can actually take a look at the spread as well as the ladder here, um, where some of those orders are. Uh, Jay mentioning that Morgan Stanley had an upgrade on the banks. That's helping the spoos here. That mm. is helping the S and P 500. That might be what's popping it off the, uh, off the open here. Looking around at some of the other stocks here, Apple really strong out of the gate here. You know, something like yeah, RVSN, yeah, yeah. one of the things that I like to do is see what kind of behavior it's going to have when it does pull back. You know, I, I don't want to just try to get into something that's, uh, continuing to push the ask and push higher you gotta you gotta know like what you're dealing with because a lot of times you'll the moment you touch something like that that's the moment that it changes its face and dr jekyll and mr hyde and, and you uh you realize that it might not have been the best best choice dr jekyll and mr hyde seem to play a role in my trading all the time stuff looks good to me all the time then as soon as i buy it it's like nope that's that's not gonna work not today all right ryan's got everybody let's start selling <laughs> exactly that's exactly what it feels feels like the market's out to get you um but to your point about rvsn yeah i mean on pullbacks right that's often going to tell us what kind of strength the stock still has left if the stock has a huge knife and can't hold any of its support levels well that's not a knife catch that's not a buy you, 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 want, you want to wait for these things to hold some of their levels and give you a setup on that. So to your point about this point, here we go now on this pull. Yanked right beneath uh, 21 here, now beneath 20, going for that 19 handle. I've got VWAP at 1944 here on Trade the Pool. We'll see if we slow down there at all. Trading action really kind of sped up here on this knife. And Andy, to your point about how this is reacting, buyers stepping in here. It's not really bouncing it right back to the highs, at least not yet, but buyers definitely stepping in here. At the moment, it's holding this rising 65 over here on the 15 second chart. And that's what I told you I, get, I look for for momentum in these plays. Mm -hmm. So, as mm -hmm. long as we're riding high on that 65, um, you know, we're still bullish. But as soon as they uh, pull the rug on that one, that's when it gets interesting. 
just talk like uh 13 was talking about with the uh train accidents all you got to do is pr some ai technology and bam your stock will pop that's what we're seeing here now we did come back into that view app and touched it uh the bounce strength not great yet um mr matt had a question about the iwm and the spy like why is that iwm down and spy up uh so the spy that's an etf uh based on the uh s p 500 index and the iwm is this uh etf that's based off the uh russell 2000 index uh so you're going to get different baskets of uh of stocks that are going to uh, react differently so iwm is going to have your uh uh your, your your small caps uh, a lot of regional banks uh things of that nature uh, spy is going to have all the like more large cap companies uh the i guess the only correlation really is how they react to interest rates uh, but IWM will have a bigger reaction to interest rates than, than uh, some of those larger names will. Great explanation there, uh, Mystery Man. That's one of the things that we talk about. We watch when SPY sells off and IWM is up, we often call that rotation. And in fact, I think Jay Rice has flagged this a number of times. Um, when we see some of the sell off, it's how we determine whether or not it's just simply rotation or an actual uh, sell off that might span across some of the indices. Really quickly here, Pixel Works. This is PXLW from our list here this morning. Uh, this looking like it's trying to go higher here. Big block of stock for sale here at 203. If that 203 gets popped, this could very easily pop back towards the highs. I have a high pre market print of 223. That would be the spot if 203 falls here. Obviously not in it here, but Pixel Works. Uh, let's see where Pixel Works or if Pixel Works can get going here. Excuse me. Uh, I had an order out for Rail Vision at the VWAP. I got filled and uh, I marked the order out of it. Let me see where I ended up with. I, Pixel I Works ended up pull here to the bottom end of the range. Yeah, this seems like a good way to lose uh lose some quick money On yeah which i went from rail vision rail vision I think it, yeah so i um got uh 20 and out at uh 2076 so 76 cent uh gain there Hanger. and i didn't yeah. feel good about that either <laughs> i did not feel good doing that pixel works i see some size here at 180 up oh, there it's looks like it's trying to pop here looks like it's trying to bounce here I want to get this a little bit closer to the size down at 185. I'm absolutely flabbergasted with Vera. It's still going up. It's like they're bringing Market in sniper. Good job on on. If, I don't know if you if you traded that, but man, this I remember when this thing was still yesterday, just yesterday when it was still yeah. under 30. Uh, or the day before. This has some pixel amazing. works temporarily. Here is Vera. This thing continuing to just rocket. Mm-hmm. CDL is being called by Smoke Tuna. Let me just, sorry about that, guys. CDLX may yeah. be taking out the high here at 793. One of the things I've really been enjoying doing, guys, here on the SPY is uh, buying long strangles uh, where you buy a put and you buy a call at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, as long as we move past that break even point, you start to make money in those. And then, um, you know, knowing how to trade and support and resistance, I can actually close out the winning side and let the losing side work back towards my number and collect that as well if it's not going to be a good day. And I've been doing pretty good with that. Okay, good deal there. Nice little option strategy. Well, the cool thing is, is um, you know, if I'm out, which I'm out a lot, uh, you got quite a bit of time most, most, mostly because uh, Theta, you know, it takes, it takes time because they want to collect that options premium. It's not going to just burn, you know, right out the gate within the first hour. So... You have quite a bit of time to mm -hmm. before you lose mm -hmm. 25 to 30 percent. 25 to 30 percent is where my stop is on those, and I'm generally making about uh, I've double my money on them usually. So, so one thing about Rail Vision right now is that it appears to be flagging. So I'm watching uh, to see if we uh, trade down or below view app again. I might be interested in going another round with this one, but it looks like it's starting to flag. There's there's gonna be support probably around 1930, 1950. Yeah, I got 1958 as the VWAP here on Trade the Pool. It does look like it's trying to build above that and compress here. So I would imagine a breakout of this direct in one direction here is going to be imminent. Yeah. Bail vision. No position right now, though. I, I this, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, everybody's going to think this is going to go off and then it sells up. 
just takes a big pull. So I'm just going to be careful and wait to see this uh, pattern flesh out a bit more. Maybe another, another uh, red uh, uh, five minute candle before I decide to make a move. I could be wrong, but I, I think something like RVSN. Um, look, before we, when we finally start to give up on this one, I think we're probably going to see that spread get a little clo a little tighter, but I could be wrong. It will be more liquid. Yeah, I think uh, it's going uh, it, to, it's sort of like this. It's it's like when they put out the welcome mat and they say, come on in, the water's nice. That's when I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> I like that analogy. Uh, David's asking, Andy, is that option strategy, is that trading zero DTEs? Um, okay, so I do both. And the zero DTEs, they they make me sweat a little more. They make me work a little harder for it, um, you know, because that data is kicking really hard. And, and you know, when we have that the, the market that's within a tight range and, and we're not going anywhere, I think that's more of a good time to uh, sell zero DTEs or, uh, you know, maybe – work on that strategy, adding an extra leg or something. I heard Marty there, so be sure to say hello on behalf of the chat. Real quickly, Pixelworks went right through that area that we were taking a look at, by the way, folks. So that 203 size just completely took it out, rocketed to new highs, took out those pre-market highs as well. Awesome on Pixelworks. If you guys hit it, I was flipping around. You know, the, the market's really serious. Trading is really serious. And, you know, if we have uh, our suspicions about whatever can go wrong or, you know, say, as soon as I put on a trade, somebody attacks me or whatever, whatever we might think. I think that we can use that to our advantage and we can sort of defang the market, so to speak, you know, uh, depending on what strategy we're using for each uh, different play. And what was on my mind a lot lately is just, you know, um, I got to respect the range rather than just look for a setup. I can't look for, oh, we're, we're holding the support level, you know, so I'm going to buy here. I got to respect the range of where we can go and should go first because, you know, Somebody out there is better than me and they have a lot more money than me. And I need to understand that before I, I mess with these things, just because of we're, we're meeting some sort of criteria to buy at this support or line or moving average or whatever, you know? Uh, re real quick, awesome job in the chat. We got some register rings to roll through. A couple of you folks hitting pixel works there. PXLW, great trade. Richard saying sold pixel works, not sure if it'll still climb. Richard, we never are. Good job paying yourself on the way up. Put some of that in your pocket. If this sets up again, you can always trade it again. Uh, good stuff there. And by the way, SMCI here, we did talk about this one being a little bit overcooked on the daily um, from looking at it at an RSI basis and just how far and how fast this stock actually moved. Might be getting a little bit of profit taking here. Uh, post earnings, SMCI down from its 554 intraday high. Got about a 40 point move here. Uh, Jay Harris saying SMCI pulled back great calls. This is it, right? With the, the catalyst, the earnings catalyst, it was great. Higher guy, good earnings, but we're going to trade the action here. A huge pop, a huge move like that. This is likely to regress back to the mean. Excellent job capturing that, identifying it, trading it, and then booking those gains here. Once again, um, same deal, just kind of in the inverse here, right? If you think, if you like this company, maybe there's another move up once it comes back into a support level. But great job trading around some of the news here today, folks. Look at this uh, movement from RVSN. I've been watching this. I saw that it was making new highs. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this is where it takes off or this is where they just absolutely uh, trap a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, traders. And it looks like that's what they just did. So there's a whole bunch of uh, people now with this uh, above uh, $21 or above 20 actually uh, bag that they're dealing with. And now we're starting to, to trade underneath my VWAP. So I'm going to wait for this one. Okay, and worth noting here, I know VWAPs differ a little bit. Um, it is literally sold off, knifed right back to the VWAP here on Trade the Pool. It is literally holding that. That happens to be right around the round number 20, so we'll see what RVSN does here. DWAC is moving. Let me bring it up. <laughs> is it time to play this again? I might have brought this up last time too, guys, but I'll tell you the lesson of last year for me and the lesson is basically uh, anything that, that is illiquid that isn't showing me like basically hope. I, I don't want to be trading on hope. Like say I got some penny stock that I'm like, oh, I believe in this for the long haul or whatever. You know, if it's not showing me anything today that it's that it's going to perform or is performing, just it's best to leave it alone because these things – Nobody else is trading them, and, and then I'm putting my money in there, and that that person who's more sophisticated has more money than me. 
they're obviously trading it too, but they're trading against me. So I don't know if any of that made sense, but if you guys get it. Oh no, it, it absolutely did. No, it's, um, it's, it's, it, it makes sense to me. There's always a bigger fish. And I don't want to be the one fried. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, DWAC is. I got levels for DWAC. I, 3850 seems to be the next level for this one. If uh, that we could get a pullback, or it's going to blast right through it and go to 40. Let's see. Looks like there's Agrify, which we talked about. Really, no movement here on this penny stock, despite having the news catalyst this morning. Pixel works still going higher, setting even new highs here. Well, you know, we could look at uh, Agrify that uh, SEC filing to see what that um, that holder bought, uh, you know, half the shares at. And that could give you kind of a base as to uh, where you might see support if it comes down to that price that it got it at. Closed Zim here. We'll wait for another move here on Zim. 13, I like your idea about adding this under 13 to the long side mm -hmm. on Zim and then waiting for that 15 pop. I've spent several days of this swing really kind of jostling back and forth between that range here. So I think what I'm going to wait for at this point now, booked gains, got that out of the way at least. Um, I think what we're going to do next here is wait for another dip under 13. I don't think the story with the whole shipping thing is over, so I'm not ready to put this on the back burner, but I am ready to just pay myself on the way up. Common theme that we've been discussing recently. Yep, just uh, have a position and trade around it. That's been it, what's been working for me. That's it. That is exactly what I'm going to attempt to do here at present. No position here in Zim, but again, we will look to re-enter that one here. Still have TGTX. So that's still cooking. Yesterday they had a uh, a headline: um, Zim shipping hike to buy at Jeffries as cash burn story turns uh, swings to cash generation. That's what we've been waiting for too with with Zim in particular. That was a uh, an indicator. Uh, last time it ran up over a hundred dollars. Their uh, cash uh, flow increased ahead of uh, those big moves. So that's what the anticipation is: is that with a with as soon as they start showing increased cash generation, increased cash flow then this could end up being a really, really big mover because their uh, profits are tied to their dip or their dividends are tied to their profits. They have a lot of profit. They give out a huge dividend. It was a really good thesis here on Zim. Still watching Pixelworks here, looking like maybe this tries to take out the high. I have a high print here, 242 on Pixelworks. Let's see if that ends up moving up. <laughs> QN, the schools of hedge fishes. <laughs> I like that. I can tell you guys this. Another thing that uh, makes me a little weary with penny stocks is not only if I see that spread coming in tight, but if I see it start to trade in sympathy with the market, you know, after it's been, you know, this beast and it's really been, you know, doing great. All of a sudden when it starts trading with the market or the spread starts coming in, I, I get a little weary with those. Uh, Smoke Tuna mentioning NVVE here on a possible setup. You can see this actually uh, popped in the pre-market. We've kind of found that base right around the VWAP curling up off of that. We'll see if it's got the strength to break that pre-market high. I've got that at about 380. The intraday regular session high is right here at 359. So keep your eye on NVVE. Smoke Tuna, great call. Jay Rice mentioning CMG. Jay, I think this is, it's probably time. I mean, it was probably time a year ago, to be honest with you, but Chipotle, this is a stock that when I look back on the history of my own trading, Chipotle, I feel like, is one of my biggest misses. Now, I didn't take any loss on this, but I miss this. I've known about Chipotle for a long time. I love Chipotle. Um, I, I like the product. The stock has been a huge performer. As Jay mentioned here, CMG has been hitting new highs every day. Seems like it's been doing this for a long time shook off things like E. coli scares and things of that nature. This has been one that I definitely uh, should have been in for a longer haul. Um, definitely feels like one of the bigger misses for me. Congrats if you have Chipotle here. The stock, just a monster. Yeah. Um, VVE reverse split last week. Our theme is holding up 13. Yeah. You got these uh, big reverse splits and they, they, tend to run because their uh, float is even smaller now. Smoke Tuna, another great call. PTPI to the VWAP here. Let's see if it breaks and moves above. Yeah. Uh, Andy, for PTPI, does your is your uh, 65 EMA uh, above VWAP or is it is it trying to is VWAP trying to cross it now? 
Uh, it looks like it's just above the VWAP, pretty much right there together. And uh, we just broke through the 65 to the north on both the 15 second and the five minute. But um, something, well, I mean, actually, this could this could turn pretty nice. Here is your PTPI <laughs> chart. Here's the five minute with that 65 EMA. To Andy's point here, we did just kind of rocket right through this. Looks like we might be back testing this here. 156 is what I have on that value. Yeah, this is uh, it's. It looks like it might be setting up. So that's why I was I was curious about what you have on your chart because I use sixty five EMA as well. Speaking of setting up, I just grabbed some. So PTPI, okay, long PTPI here for Andy. Let's go. Looks like Nexi's moving. N E X I. You guys got me thinking I should try PTPI here. I mean, PTPI, it just seems like something that I could easily take partial profit if we start working towards the highs. And if yeah, we drop below yeah. this 200 EMA on the five minute at 147, about, uh, you know, just just drop it. I think 142 for me would be a good stop. That'd be 20 cents from where it's at right now. Do we have some size lined up here, 163, 164? Yeah, Nexi. Uh, let's take a look ne at Nexi. It, it's it's halted now. Ah, halted to the upside here. So this is actually yeah. just shy of yesterday's intraday high here on Nexi. Nice little volume pop here. Uh, this this has also been a wild one. OCO order or bracket order time. <laughs> Not to be clear, guys, like I don't typically try to make money or anything on stuff like PTPI for my own account. Um, you know, I just, uh, I'm always talking about my own, on my own account. But anyways, uh, you know, this is more of just, I'm taking a risk here, and I don't really want anybody to follow me. Mm -hmm. I totally understand that. Uh, you know, a lot of what I where my money comes from is these longer, uh, you know, year plus holds. But this is you know good supplemental income, and uh, it's enjoyable to do. Hey, you know, it's one of those things where it forces me to kind of pay attention to what's going on, right? Like if we're constantly looking at new issues, new pieces of news, new movers, that's forcing me to stay on top of a lot of the stuff. And sometimes that affects some of the other trades that we have. I mean, Zim, that Zim trade was born out of just simply a discussion and a thesis here. Oh, SoFi, to... SoFi, by the way, is moving here out of the gate. I know we traded this one yesterday here. SoFi looking like it's trying to take 930. Yesterday highs were right around 950, weren't they? 944-ish. So let's see what we had on the top end of this candle. Nine. 30. No, it's got to be more than that. Sorry. Let yeah, I just you, really, let me get you that exact value here. It's going to bother me. 943. I just really enjoyed the whole thesis with Zim. It just, you know, the, the whole region. Yeah, it made chaos. sense. Topical, oh, made great. sense. The whole nine yards. It was great. And earlier we were talking about getting 13, uh, 65 EMA shirt. I got another shirt that's a garbage man shirt. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. Like, we have to recognize what's garbage. So I wouldn't want to take uh, and trade penny stocks that I know are more likely to be garbage the same way that I would, you know, something that I I, I, I know that I can sort of earn some, some more with. Andy, I'm going to stick with the theme. And if I get that shirt from you, I'm just going to end up uh, getting into WM. <laughs> waste management <laughs> oh that's funny all right uh kura here this is just it had a nice move right back to its vwap now it looks like it's pushing away from vwap i'll be honest 13 i'm with you on kura this thing's just an absolute rocket Which a nice little nice little one. floating island formation here on the daily oh and it was vera that you mentioned my bet my yeah. bad sorry i'm getting them mixed no, up I, it's, it's okay i just don't want to take anybody's credit for something they found and i believe it's uh I thought, is it Smoke Tuna that started talking about this or was it somebody else? I think the, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Or Jonathan. I, I, struggle, I struggle with that too. I don't want to miscredit anybody. Whoever either. it was, it's not, I, stuff. I don't want to take any credit for it. <clears throat> that was your find. You guys get the credit. Every time I'm in here, guys, Smoke Tuna seems to come up with some of the most amazing plays. Dude, I'm telling you, oh, our, yeah. our community, our community doubles as a scanner. Like this isn't just fun. It's also they're also looking. More eyeballs, oh, yeah. more trades. Smoke tuna, the crow, easy Mike, Lynn, everybody in here is awesome. They all bring uh they all bring something to the table and it's amazing. Love Pixel it. Pixel works on its pullback here. I've got VWAP at 218 on Pixel Works. See if we come back in there and hold. All right, here we go. RSVN twenty-two. 
This is uh, I was I didn't have my eyes on our VSN. Yeah, this was the move I was waiting for because it was looking like it would do this, but I wasn't paying right attention. above twenty two there. Yeah, and uh, it looks like it could go even further. Maybe uh, it looks maybe like the uh, next fifteen minutes. Sorry. Uh, it looks like uh, LMFA, 244,000 traded, only up 3%, but some volume starting to step into this one. I don't know if there's news or any reason to be looking at this, but, uh, you know, something, when I see volume stepping up like that, it could uh, turn into something. Hmm. Still waiting for Nexi to come out of that halt. That'll be a fun time. PTPI. Um, you're still you're still in this one, waiting for it to kind of uh, make the move. Oh, PTPI, yeah, I'm I'm just hanging out there. I kind of forgot I had it. <laughs> so we can. So it's not really moving. It's really kind of just button up against that view app right now. Yeah. As long as it's hanging out and it's riding high on the 65 over here on the 15 second, that's the launch pad. That's what we're looking for, and that's what we could bring us back up to, you know, let's say 198 or something. If we could hit anywhere near 190, though, I would be out or at least take a nice uh, piece of uh, partial profit on that. The volume is not there in NVVE right now, but it it, it looks like it's setting up, and it, the last component is just needs we just need more volume in it, but it's got a good setup right now. This one, uh, this one might be challenging the pre-market high. Here we go for uh, PTPI. There it is. One seventy-three is the next level I have for that one, or one seventy-five, either one. Nice move through the view app here on PTPI. We'll see if it comes right back into it, or if it actually holds above. And this it, it it just seems uh, with with these upper shadows here on the five minutes seems very precarious, uh, but we are holding strong on those support levels. So, uh, you know, it looks like your typical runner that's that's going to hold those nice levels and and take off back towards the highs. It just keeps getting smacked down by some of these larger sizes. But the next large size that I see of uh, of selling is uh, not until seventy five. So the, it just needs the volume. We just need to get I, more buyers in there. It, it, we're, yeah. We're, okay. Here we go. We're pushing now. I agree. I see that 70 size at 75 and size at 77. So that area in there uh, might be in play real quickly here. Uh, Alexander, um, good to see you again, asking about NVIDIA. Um, I mean, NVIDIA, mm -hmm. this thing has just been an absolute rocket ship. I mean, my thoughts are at this point, I don't have a, a play for earnings. I would say if I was going to play the binary event just based on its history, what we saw from SMCI, the sector itself, the th the AI theme that's going on, I'd probably want to trade calls. But I just feel like that's kind of gambling here. I want to see what happens when NVIDIA reports. Uh, I've got their report here confirmed for February 21st. So we're still several weeks out here, three weeks out here on NVIDIA's report. Um, the other thing here. Alexander, is that I wouldn't be shocked if this kind of ran into earnings. That might change the equation a little bit. If we run into earnings over these next few weeks, I think that that actually sets up for a down move after earnings. And I'm not commenting on what they report. I'm commenting on how the stock actually trades after it reports those earnings. In fact, let's take a look here, SMCI, and see how that's doing now. After its report, so this had a really good report pre-announced was up, you know, eighty percent going into that report here, and now we're trading lower here substantially, you know, thirty points lower here about. So, well, I, I'm I'm curious to see if the same thing's going to happen uh, to Nvidia here, but frankly, I'm too chicken to jump in front and short it. You know, I, I wow. that's to, to me, I I just don't have. I tried that before. I actually tried using NVDS, the inverse ETF. To try and lower my risk but still remain exposed short and it just didn't go well so um just something to keep in mind here my thoughts are nvidia is one of the strongest stocks with a really really hot theme behind it right now i i can't predict uh how it's going to trade after earnings though you see that how Nexi, we just got uh, smacked uh, in the market sorry go ahead no it's okay i was just mentioning how nexi just unhalted uh popped 12 and came back in um sorry andy and and you guys anybody watching i mean i Sorry, Ryan, I have to do this. I absolutely love my mugs. So anybody that wants to send me mugs, I will uh, I will gladly drink out of them during every live stream I'm on. 
Okay, no problem. I, hey, look, there's there's nothing there's nothing better than a good coffee mug, right? Uh, you, we were laughing about my uh, tea mug that I use that has the uh, uh, middle finger uh, on the bottom. Fueled by caffeine. There's another good one. We all we all have our uh, coffee cups. Mine is really nothing special, unfortunately. It's a La Creuset purple coffee cup. It's my uh, it's my go-to though. The OG of the coffee cups, as they say. My number one rule, Ryan, is never to put my hand out, right? But when it comes to coffee mugs, I don't mind doing it. I just yeah, coffee breaks a lot of rules for me, right? There, there's a lot of things that I'll do for coffee that I wouldn't do for pretty much anything else. So I can understand that. Nexi here, by the way, yep. really moving higher here on this move. Ooh, there it goes. And look at the market, man. Wow. And the spy get, is coming in here. Did we get data or something? Let's take a look here. Uh, I think Richard Poltz, uh, posted uh, Jolt's Jobs. Let me get uh, my other news feed up here. Consumer confidence uh, as well. Yep. Jolt's job openings for December 9.026 million versus the 8.75 million expected. 8.79 was the prior reading. So that's over the prior and the expected number. CB consumer confidence 114.8 versus the 115 estimate. Prior reading was 108 there. So that number just a little bit soft here. Spy still pulling. Actually, it looks like maybe it temporarily stopped here this pulls across the market though pull on the nasdaq pull on the dow uh pull on the spy and i'm willing to bet the iwm is the same tlt still green though says jay yeah iwm pulled here too <laughs> jane smith that's a great mug i love you like kanye loves kanye that actually isn't bad at all Nexi, new highs here. Nexi going for mm -hmm. 13, folks. What was the next spot that you said you had on here? Was that 13 and a half? On, on Nexi? It's yeah. blown through my levels. I don't have any okay. uh, new levels for this one. I think one off the daily here, 1355, maybe 13. It looks like that's in the 1350s there. It was it was PTPI I had levels for. But yeah, this thing is, Nexi's just taken off again. My lord. And Apple, after we talked about that, having a really strong opening candle here, Apple pulling back, actually taking, oops, uh, actually pulling again uh, along with that market pull here. Now, that pull looks like that stopped here. So maybe that leg down is done off that data print that we got. We've I'm looking for it to come back up and retest uh, 490.97 at this point, a declining level, Ryan. And at that point, I think we'll get to see if we're going to continue to reject and drop off here or if we're going to continue to be in the monster we've seen in the last what i don't know how many weeks now this is insane yeah I yeah, looks when, like we, when we're gonna take a break sorry 13 go ahead no that's right we keep talking about this uh blow off top like it's happened several times and now we're just getting more blow off tops how many blow off tops are we gonna have before the market's like okay that's well when, when's the real one gonna come that's that's my <laughs> that's my question when is the real uh blow off top that we can trade by the way onmd this was one of the smaller stocks from yesterday this popping here we're above the vwap looks like it's flagging here right around 117 maybe that 115 area onmd i don't know if this is the real blow off top ryan but i just locked in some profit here short so Figured uh, it's there you go. Nice like, job. Nice job. looking like we could hold. And uh, I would like to maybe see what we do around. Actually, let me give you numbers on the SPY. About 490.49 is what I'm looking to see what we can do. If we can hold that level, I don't want to be short any longer. Uh, real quick, it looks like Microsoft. Jay Rice here mentioning Microsoft went red briefly. Looks like it bounced off that red green line, although it did print red. Richard adding AMD. Amgen, Apple, SoFi, all of them went red here. So definitely getting a reversal here uh, in the market. And it's it's spread into some of these individual names as well. We'll see if those reclaim or if they continue lower here. Have you guys seen Nexi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Nexi we were... continuing to rip to the upside here. That was the one that was halted earlier. Okay, so we got 42% on Nexi right now, 1.4 million traded. I would love to see 100% Ripper here, and it looks like it could do it. Looks like some of these are coming in. Nexi looks like maybe that's slowing down. Just lost 13 there, the $13 level. Yeah, I'm still here.
taking a look on the other screen here um, on my scanner. Just trying to take a look at some of the other names that we've been looking at here today. Yes, uh, maybe uh, right, right now, this is how, how stocks die 101 right here. On every day that I've ever traded the market, the SPY overall or any of any, the Qs, you know, and we have the 65 rejection, uh, a negative slope there. And then you got the flat 365 and 200 and they're meeting and it's getting rejected overall. That is the days that this turns into the over and over, you know, bear flag drop, bear flag drop. So how can I duplicate that here on my chart, Andy? I've got a SPY five minute chart with the 65 EMA. How do we see that? Closest thing you could do, Ryan, is slap a 200 EMA on there and put it on the one minute. Okay. Yeah, that can be Crow. done. <laughs> Crow, you're right. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, you know, I bet they're wishing they had never looked at that stock. And you see how you got that, uh, that 65 is holding as resistance and on that sort of bear flag deal. We're right back to it right now. And then you're holding, uh, if you have the 365, which you don't, that is just where the, uh, well, it's popping some lower shadows there, but that's basically what I look at every single day. So Crow's comment here, um, not it's about blowing up their accounts. As I recall, a week ago, they were discussing shorts would blow up their accounts on RVSN. They didn't know, uh, they didn't know. Now they know. Crow, you should say that. You should change that to now they crow and then get the caca sound <laughs> in there. I mean, that was a missed opportunity right there for sure. Uh. <laughs> so here is here are those two EMAs, Andy, uh, on the one minute chart. You can see we did actually take that 200 EMA. That's gonna be the blue line. We went right through that 65 on that one minute chart. We'll see if we push higher here higher. on the SPY. Well, if you, if you wanna have some fun, Ryan, and you wanna do a little extra work, add a 365 EMA on there too. Okay, that's not too much work, so I can agree to that. Basically, when we break south of the 65, we'll usually bounce the 200 first, go back to the to the 65 for rejection, and then we'll work our way down to the 365, and we'll see at that point if we're going to hold the support and go back up and continue higher, or if we're actually going to drop off and 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 it's going to be a, you know a disaster. I'm typically looking at the 15 second rather than the one minute, but the one minute does provide a lot of value with these moving averages. It looks so like Andy, we got coming back in here. Sorry, 13, go ahead. That's right. Uh, Andy, when you're uh, talking about going uh, the price going through the 65 down to the 200 EMA uh, and you're looking for a bounce back up to the 65, after that uh, that rejection at the 65 off the 200 EMA bounce, are you looking to see if it either does A, uh, holds up the 200 EMA to make another move up through the 65 EMA? Or looking for a down move through the 200 EMA. Look at those I mean, two things. Pretty much, things? it would depend on the play overall. But um, you know, the 65 is where I'm looking for that rejection. But the reclaim, I, I used to get uh, a little irritated when it didn't happen, and we and we just flew right through it. You know, we had that reclaim mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned early on that the reclaim might be more powerful of a message than than the rejection itself at the 65. Gotcha. I saw this. I saw that very thing happen with DWAC the other day. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it ended up going a little bit higher, rec reclaiming some of the, uh, the, uh, higher levels earlier that day. So just one of the things I was curious about, uh, I've seen, I've seen the exact same thing happen before where it tests the 200 EMA twice after falling through the, uh, 65 and retesting the resistance. And then it comes up through it the third time on, on, on its third visit. I mean, see what, I, what I've noticed is on days when you don't have much follow through, when you have that, that, that game that they're playing there, that ping pong sort of, you know, we drop off the 65, we hit the 200, it's a good buy and then sell just shy of the 65 rejection because at the 65 rejection, if you get greedy, you're probably going to miss the, the, miss the trade. You know, you're not going to be able to get yeah, that. Yeah. The liquidity is not there for it. So taking a little, a little, a little shy on that and then letting it go back to the 365. And that's the point where you really got to ask yourself, you know, is, is this, this is really precarious at the 365 here. If it drops off, it's going to drop off huge. So do I really want a chance buying something there? But a lot of times it will, it will, it'll bounce right back from the 365, shoot right back up to the 65. And at that point, the reclaim is beautiful, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, re real real quickly here, 13, let me just jump in real fast. Um, change the view here. Uh, Funkadelic Bob, while you're updating charts, can you have it show the ticker and not just the company name? Good call here. Um, what you're referring to is going to be the watermark on the back of the chart here. I have gone ahead and changed it. I noticed that... Um, I had the ticker displayed when I'm sharing Benzinga Pro, but I had the name of the company displayed when I was sharing Trade the Pool. 
And I can absolutely understand how that could be a, a little bit more confusing. I have changed this now, so you should be all good. All of my watermarks should be tickers going forward. Great call. Um, RVSN, it, it looks like there's another move left in this. And I don't think I would want to see this go much further than 25 because uh, then we'll be really extended. I think if we, there is one more move in this, 25 is probably going to be uh, about close to where the limit's going to be for me on this one. Uh, yeah, this, I'm sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. I'm done. I was going to say, this is, Jay's making a really good point here. RVSN, what does it have in common with a lot of these squeeze plays that we've been mm -hmm. taking a look at? And Jay's saying there's no option chain. So what this means is that the shorts can't hedge using options. And maybe that's something else that we can kind of look for in some of these names that we're going to trade. If they don't have an options chain, it might be harder for shorts to actually hedge this. And then maybe the only method that they have of exposing themselves short is via a short sale of stock. And that might contribute to the squeeze. I think, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong here, but your thought is that if they had options chains, maybe the squeeze potential wouldn't be there because the shorts would hedge with options. Am I getting that right? Jane Smith, ring the register. Jane Smith, you are really kept crushing it recently oh, yeah. uh ring the register on that nice job uh, i know you're saying you got out too early look if you're booking gains on a regular basis you're doing something right try not to uh be too hard on yourself here nexi nice little pop there 1348 we're actually beneath your sell point here with a spread of 20 cents almost great job there pxlw might be getting ready to go again if it can continue to hold these levels uh you know if it can stay if we can keep the candle body above uh, 220, I'd be uh, I'd be watching this to uh, make another move up beyond 244 that I made earlier. Next, he's still going, I think. Uh, smoke uh, too. Call him Lucid here. Lucid popping here. It looks like Lucid's got some size here at 360. If it takes that off, it can go. Um, <clears throat> Andy, I'm going to go to you here in a sec, real quick. Jane, uh, they're all tiny profits, mad money. Look, here's one thing that I learned uh, when I started. I, of course, when I got started in this, I wanted to make big profits just like everybody else. But little profits are not to turn your nose up at. You can stack those gains. That building and that move towards consistency can really help long term. So uh, great job. A win is a win. Can, congratulate yourself, I would say. Jeremy, I'll, yeah, I'll, be, I'll be right back. Let me just throw up the screen here real quick. Yeah, there, two, Andy. Big, there, Andy. two biggest mistakes that I've made is uh, going too big in size, and uh, well, that's that's a really big one. And then adding to losers. I mean, in in my time trading, adding to losers or going too big is is, I think. I mean, I mean am I missing something here? Or something? No, 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 no. I I think that's absolutely right on because you you have these rules and you know you're supposed to follow them, but then sometimes you start you know like, well, maybe if I just do this, and you start breaking the rules, and you get more into it than you should have and you're like okay well i deserve this because i broke my rules i've run into that several times and it makes it makes me you know it makes me take on less risk when i know i shouldn't be breaking my rules rvsn man it's it's gonna go to 25. this thing's going up and yeah we got 56 uh, percent on rvsn now and we are riding that 65 strong nice yeah, one. I don't know if you have a broker where you can pull up the fifteen second or um, what a trading trading view. I think right. They they have it as well, but it is a beautiful indicator to look for your momentum and the strength. It's like basically when we're riding above the sixty five, that's like jail for the bears, you know. And when we're riding below it, that's jail jail for the bulls. And it happens like that every single day, and just keeps rejecting or keeps finding support there. And uh, yeah, I, the lowest time frame that I typically use was one minute, but I look on the fifteen second right now and. That's a lot to look at. Uh, 65 EMA uh, still works here for you? 65 EMA, on the 15 second, I'm not looking for setups or anything. I'm only looking at those three uh, moving averages and price relation to the moving averages. Okay. It's all about where who's in jail. Are the bears, bears in jail, the bulls, or are we <laughs> just sitting? Yeah, who's going to get out and pass go, right? Yep. Yeah, when I say 15 second, I think a lot of people think that that's what I'm zooming into to trade, you know, like that's what I'm using uh, to find trades for setups and stuff. And that's not the case, because like I said, we got to respect the range and you're not going to see the range on a 15 second chart. I'm going to uh, ease into uh, PXLW here and uh, and try to go for this up move that I think is going to happen. Nexi is a beast. Yeah, it is. I may, jo I may join you on that 13. 
RVSN 2337. Uh, just another dollar 63 to go. You guys see they're pulling that spread together. Uh, M long PXLW here. This breaks beneath what I've got 221 as the view app here. I think a 220 break will probably stop out of this. All right. Before before anything, I'm thinking that our VSN, we're pop, probably going to pop that upper shadow, and then we're going to see a little bit more of a consolidation from selling perhaps, but I could be totally wrong. There we go on PXLW. Let's go. There we go. Let's see if we can take 242 out here. Your highs, 244. Would love to see a pop above that. Do have some size here at 242. And at this point, trade will not let the trade go red on me. Yep, I got my stop lifted. And this is a great setup. I came back from the washroom at exactly the right time. I will take that. Yeah. Here we are at 242. Watch if the size gets hit here on PT, or PXLW. Excuse me. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have shorts available on RVSN. Nobody wants that thing shorted. All right, stopped out. PXLW. Got uh, got 10 cents on that. Nice that's, entry. A, that's a good way to, to, to figure out if we're trading garbage, though, I think. Like you said earlier, Ryan, if there's no options and there's no shorts available... That's a good chance you're trading trading garbage. You know? Yeah, that was that was a that's a good observation there by Jay. And uh, you know, we, we we talk all the time. We go back and forth about trading some of those bigger stocks. There, it's important to learn some of those relationships, how those things differ, how the trading action differs. I I think that's a good thing that we should take a look at here. And then you look at institutional ownership on top of that, and it just adds icing yeah. to the to the garbage cake. Icing to the garbage cake. Now, that doesn't sound all that great. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's, it's icing on the garbage cake. <laughs> but, but Ryan, before you ever traded, if somebody would have said, hey, do you want to buy a company that has a lot of debt? It's a penny stock. It's ripping. It's up. Uh, it was 30 cents. It's up to 30 bucks. You know, and you want to trade it up here at 30 to try to get to 32. That wouldn't have sounded too good. I don't think. No, the first thing I would ask you is, well, what do they do? Because at that point, I, I was not familiar with the different market mechanics, you know, stocks moving back and forth. That had been like a penny stuff. What, what, what does it do? What's the thesis? What's the story? And uh, back on the RVSN, we just dropped off that 65. So we got that potential rejection here at, let me see, 2244. If, uh, you yeah, know, we might not get that upper shadow I was talking about earlier. Uh, the next minute to six minutes, I'm looking for RVSN to, you know, try to make another push. I am thinking I'm going to have to stop here on Pixelworks. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Nexi. Nexi. <laughs> Nexi's still going? It's definitely still going. 16 bucks now. Oh, wow. Look at that go. Just saw some buying there in Pixelworks. Let's see if it can move up here. 236 it's gonna will halt. be the next spot. Next is halting. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't want to take this off the screen until I close the trade. Yep, there we go. Halt. I guess you know what I can do, guys? I can I can do this. I can just Raise set a stop. stop. Just set a stop here. And we'll actually bring that up one more. Okay, let's take a look here at Nexi. If we stop out of that, we stop out of that. If it, if it takes some of those sizes out, we'll still be in it. Here is now, wow, 1606 into that halt here on Nexi. You know, Smoke Tuna, I was just looking at ITRM. Do you like it down here? Let's take okay. a look at that chart here real quick. I see. We're, we're, right, we're basically at the, uh, the uh, pre-market uh, uh, demand zone here for the past two days. And and regular session, so this okay. I see what he's getting at. What else do we got here? Rail vision. I think Rail vision is just setting up to try to make that next push up to twenty five. I might be wrong though. Be wrong. I'm not sure that the the volumes here for this breakout on uh, Pixel works. You're in this one, Ryan? Yeah, still in it. Haven't been stopped out of it yet. Well, it's it's trying. Trying for Ryan. It's uh two, what, 241 that it has some resistance at. I don't see the size there. 
So 245, I see the problem. Yeah, 245 yeah, so is that size that we're hoping gets taken out there. There was a little bit at 242. It looks like that's been uh, hit into here. Um, and actually, I'm... So they say misery go. likes company, go. Ryan. So I was going to join you here. Um, and I might regret not joining you, but this uh, volume has me thinking we could still consolidate. Let's see if we move above this 244 here. And all of a sudden, you're going to get this big whale that's coming yeah. and be like, fine, yeah. let's buy it all. You know, you know, and it actually looks like there's more size here at 245. So maybe that's shifting around a little bit. Pixel works back up here. I take a lot of that size <laughs> with a grain of salt, though. If you uh, if you trade options, uh, if you trade leaps especially, and you put in your order um, to sit, to sell, let's say, They'll, they'll drop the bid, they'll drop everything, you know, and then as soon as you yep. take it out, they'll lift that bid back up and they'll put those huge numbers right back in there as soon as you remove your order. You put your mm -hmm. order back mm -hmm. in there and then they'll move those huge up numbers to another spot and just, it happens every time. So a lot of these these numbers are um, what, smoke and mirrors. And there we go with that consolidation, but we're holding that 65 though. So a lot of times, uh, even though we pulled back off the highs, the 65 can hold and we can still launch. And the volume is kicking up a little bit now. I, mean, I, I am. I did just stop there uh, on Pixel Works. So stopped. Oh, and look oh, at that. So yeah. your first stop is your Perfect. best stop. So 13, thank you for suggesting that I put a stop there because if I had started to talk through the trade instead of having the platform execute the trade for me, I likely would have been trapped in that pull. So that was a good move. Um, appreciate Green on that, that play? Green on that play, yep. All one right. For, one for one, small here today, but green on the play. Remember, we also cashed out a swing for green as well on Zip. Yeah. So we, technically, the two exits here have produced profit in the account. That's a good start to the day here. RVSN. RVSN. It's looking like it's trying to make that move. doesn't have the volume quite yet, though. Okay, maybe now it's starting to get it. The moment you sold, Ryan, that thing just, uh, yep, that candle just kind of dropped off. So you're saying I had my stop in the right place is what it sounds like. That's what's going That's on there. Like uh, Pixel, Smoke2 oh, is saying Pixel works maybe flushing weak hands. And this is a really important yeah. point, right? Because you might actually be able to trade that flush. And and another uh, QN reminding you here, this might seem obvious to some, but this reminder is actually a good one. Uh, <laughs> PXLW is not Pixar. So it sounds kind of the same, but they're not the same. So don't get it confused for a long-term hold. Nice PSA there. Yeah, they yeah, Disney yeah. acquired them a long time ago. And we got a 1019.39 for the uh, halt on Nexi. So uh, what, 1024.39. So Kira... Uh, might be setting up for a move here. K U R A. The volume's not great, but the formation looks not bad. They got angry that you took some profit, Ryan. Well, I'm sorry about that. I, I really am. <laughs> this bank account's not too bad with it, though. And I wish I had gotten to CDLX. It was looking really good after those three red candles. Uh, the halt indicating 18s I'm seeing on Twitter. I don't have that ability. And I don't know how you guys do that, what broker you have, or what gives you that. Uh, I don't have the ability of knowing or having an indication on where the stock's going to unhalt. I guess sometimes Thinkorswim does that with the active ladder that I use, but for the most part, I don't. I actually rely on the masses that are trading some of these names. And inevitably, when these stocks are entering halts and back and forth, there's a bunch of people trading them. I guess there is some brokers out there that allow you to kind of gauge that. I'm seeing here on Twitter indicating 18s. I would just assume that they're looking at uh, other exchanges that are not halted, perhaps. Uh, Smoke Tuna saying, I can see on the level two the price changes on the halt. And that's what I mean. Sometimes I can see that on Thinkorswim. Other times I can't. So I I'm looking on the ladder uh, for Nexi, and I just see a bunch of bids, nothing but bids. John. On, uh, above 18. John mentioning there is a screen you can run. I think you meant a script. There's a script you can run in toss. Interesting, John. 
and then that will that will tell you where the halt indications are. That would be an interesting script and plugin. I appreciate you mentioning that. Take a yeah, look. It looks like we're going. Go ahead, looks like sorry, we're going go to ahead, at least ten twenty nine here in Nexi for the halt. Yeah, Lynn, this is a good point. That was great to see this, that the stop worked. We need to use them more. Let the machine help us. We can't do it all manually. Um, Lynn, absolutely. And, and I, you know, and, and here's the thing, right? So on stocks, maybe that you're not as familiar with as Tesla, for example, maybe that stop is appropriate. But for something that you're watching every day that you really have like a strong grasp of, maybe you don't need it as much. I, I suppose a lot depends on what all the other things you're looking at. If it's a very busy day and you're looking at a whole bunch of different things, yeah, uh, stop. I mean, the whole reason I placed that is because we're talking about it. We were talking about other stocks. I wanted to view the other stocks, but I didn't want my trade to all of a sudden change. So we put it in there and we were able to do that. RVSN pull. Yeah. Back to my VWAP or close to it. That is right to the VWAP here and trade the pool. And it actually looks like it's trying to bounce a little bit here. It needed to pull back anyway. Yeah, PXLW never got uh, any higher than what we saw when uh, Ryan was trading it and I was trading it. What happened with Nexi? Still halted. And I decided to do something crazy and trade against the monster trend in the spy again. So took another short in uh, futures here. Things are starting to go down. You guys ever say to yourself, why does why, do, why doesn't the real you know like you said they're going down? They said and, and anyways. That, that it's going down for real thing. How come that never happens when we're trading it? It always happens when we're watching it. Hmm. Because they're watching us. Right, right. <laughs> well, I got another one for you. Whenever you go to put an order in, you guys ever see the price do something against your move before you even put the order in? You're, you're like, how do they know? That level two data that they're seeing. I mean... I don't know that for a fact, but if I can see other people's orders, they can see mine. Oh, no, I'm saying that this is the com a complete conspiracy theory. And I'm just oh, joking. Oh. But I'm saying before you even put the order in, when you're actually just typing the numbers in to set up the order and you haven't even clicked send yet, and all of a sudden price starts moving against you, and you're like, see, they can see my orders before I even put them in. Yeah, I don't know what devices they've got in us that uh, they're able to extract that information, but it's working. Apple, big pull here, by the way, folks. Uh, let me check the news here. Let me bring it up here. Apple, big pull these last uh, few minutes. This is a three-minute chart that we're looking at, so this is about you know six minutes, at least four minutes going on. Let me see if I can pull up any news here on Apple. If you guys don't know, I, I like to have fun with the conspiracy theories. <laughs> I don't see any fresh news here on Apple. Is anyone else out there? I see something from earlier this morning. I don't know how big of a deal it is, but it says analysts favor Amazon over Apple ahead of uh, upcoming earnings. I'd have to, you know, see what yeah. that's about. It's from Tip Rank, so I don't know. How uh, next, don't know. He, next he's out of that halt now, guys. All right, let's take a look at that here. And we came out, uh, what, 1724, I believe. And I or, think uh, that the last indication we got from Smoke Tuna was 1725. So his indication is nice. working pretty well here. 1850, this looks like this is trying to go higher here on Nexi. Big move. It's going to help. Just, gonna just help like again. you, Ryan, I need to figure out how they're, uh, how they're figuring that out. I'm going to check out uh, John's suggestion here on the toss script. I'm going to Google that later. I think it's an absolute monster, though. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. 104% right now. We got a hundred percent ripper on Nexi. Yeah, we do. Nineteens here on Nexi. Rail vision really selling off. Probably not going to get that twenty-five unless it comes back later. Now, a lot of my uh, stocks in my main account that were up yesterday down today. So we're just kind of seeing the inverse of that. SSYS, one of them. And it looks like we're going to go back into a halt here on Nexi. Yeah. Take care of yourself, Judge. Great to see you. 
See you, Judge. Have a good day, Judge. Uh, Andy, Great. would you, you restate the EMA levels, please? Uh, which one was that? Yeah, Lynn, I, I, can you be more specific? We'd be happy to do that. RVSN, yeah, that break beneath the view app, that might be toast. Yeah. Sorry, they, they say I have ADD, so I, I move on quite quickly. Did Nexi go higher? Yeah, we're almost at yeah, 20. Oh, we went to 20. Jeez. Oh. That thing's crazy. It looks like Nexi's really starting to pull. It's a, not the greatest looking top wick there. Um, Kira not working. I don't have anything. Wow, look at Lucid go. It's a bunch of green candles uh, for the past, what, half hour? You know, what's interesting about Lucid 13 is that didn't we have, yeah, we had some pretty big relative volume yesterday, right? Like yesterday's volume stick uh, above the uh, above the norm. Lucid had a, obviously a big move, did a good job holding that, and we're seeing that again continue here today. It seemed like uh, all EVs were ripping yesterday. I don't remember what the, the story was about that. I'm just, I'm just like, waiting to see if nvidia is going to actually get to 650 it's it's getting pretty close 17 bucks away i'll be right back guys sure you got it save rvsn i guess we're just uh, kind of in that time of day we're just kind of waiting for things to cool off and set back up again i'm not seeing anything else right now anybody else no i don't see a whole lot uh, Alexander calling Nvidia for a thousand prints by the end of the week. <laughs> and I'm looking around here, Twitter too. I don't. Uh, the stocks that we've identified seem to be the same stocks being talked about on the Twitter streets, as I like to say. Um, so I don't think we're missing anything here. Yeah, I'm just. Waiting for these setups. I, I, I don't want to catch any of this on its way down. Um, DWAC, is that coming? Make another move? Let me bring that up here, 13. Oh, yeah. Got through that 3850 level, trying to make our way to 40. Yeah, Nexi was great. Uh, MDAI. So MDAI is uh, it's been moving up ever since it came out of the gate, except uh, for one candle. MDAI. ITRM is that actually starting to make a move now? Still curling. Looks like there's uh, some good sized sell orders at 193 and 195 from ITRM. Actually, that bottom might be in on ITRM. It's quite possible. That's, I think, what Smoke Tune is, uh, is trying to say here. EXLW is still consolidating, holding that view up. It is doing a good job holding that VWAP. ITRM, this looks like maybe we do kind of trade back towards the uh, VWAP here in ITRM. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of ITRM. Just because I like it down here with all this other demand that we've had for the past couple of days. Let's see back some of these you guys i'm just movement. happy if uh i did not buy at the highs there and something like itrm and added at the first pullback and then added at the second and then added at the lows and i'm yeah, still holding yeah. it and then a couple of years later i'm still holding it and it's worth about maybe uh seven percent of my original investment i'm just i'm, I'm happy about that yeah well good <laughs> i was gonna say we, we talked a lot about adding to positions generally speaking 
on a day trade position, unless I intentionally don't buy full size, I generally don't add when it goes beneath my cost basis. Um, for a swing or an investment, that's an entirely different thesis and structure. So I, that behaves differently, but I'm with you there. I, I don't want to be trapped in something I can't get out of and bag holding it for a year. I, I, I can't deal with that. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things with that 65, uh, you know, 200, 365 on the 15 second. Anytime that we're in jail for, let's say, uh, the bulls, you know, and we're riding below that, that's a place for me that I'm just like, no go. I'm not going to add. If, anytime we're below that level, I can't add. If we're above it and I'm short, I can't add. Because if I if I do and I have, you know, that's that's when things get painful. And eventually you have to learn not to touch that stuff. Eventually. ITRM. ITRM. Yeah, this is move a great buy there. Yeah. Thank you, Smoke Tuna, for yep. flagging me on this. There's the chat scanner coming back. Take a drink out of my thermo flask branded Stanley cup. I don't have much coffee. Oh, oh that, that that's a Stanley Ryan? Mm -mm. No, I no, went no. to Costco. It's a funny story I told yesterday. I went to Costco and I saw that they had thermo flask, which I have several thermo flask products and really like them. And I was like, oh, this is clearly a Stanley Cup competitor. And it was a two pack for $24. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that for sure. I'm going to not have the trendy name, but I'm I'm going to have something with just as good of a function. So I'm just kind of just kind of being a smart ass about it. Thank you, Ryan, because I'm going to go buy some today. So I'm there you go. You <laughs> there you go. They got a bunch of different colors you can get too. <laughs> Just keep raising my stop on ITRM. That's I know one thing. Though. Either, either way, when you're in this Florida heat or any heat for that matter in the summer and you come back to your car after hours and it's still ice in your cup, that's a win. Yep. And I would change that a little bit to say if I have a thermos that can keep water ice cold while I'm on the golf course, I found something that's good. Right. Exactly. <laughs> And I would agree with Buzz. I love my Yeti too. My golf tumbler thermos is in fact a Yeti. I'm going to flip over to my scanner here real quick. Um, put that up on screen here. Let's roll through some of these and see what we can find out here. All right. I'm stopped out of ITRM, five cent trade. Not too big, but oh, well, I guess I'm glad I got out of it now because it's pulling. Lucid is still out. pressing the highs here. This just big staircase all the way up today. MDAI, did we talk about that one here? That's holding at the highs. This actually looks like this might break and go higher. MDAI. Do you guys notice whoever the Wizard of Oz actually is, they're kind of a baby. You know, like like you took profit, it went all crazy. Uh, 13, you took some profit and it went crazy. You know, I think that whoever pulls the strings behind the scenes, they're they're a bit of a baby. Yeah, I don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. There we go. <laughs> but no, I think you're right. Oh, it did, I didn't capture them. I didn't trap them in this. Damn it. MDAI. Look at that thing go. Wow. Next level I have is 330. And there are some people in the day trading chat that are just absolutely destroying Nexi. What a oh wow, that thing pulled too. Rail Vision might be trying to make a comeback. Hello, Thinking. Crassy. Good morning. Hello there. Uh, Rail Vision uh, dropped down to five on my uh, top percentage gainers, so they're dropping down the list. F Gen here. This has made several moves today. Maybe this takes out 190. 190, you're high there on F Gen. Did we have news on F Gen here this morning? Then if they can, if this can continue to close above VWAP, then it, it's still possible. I mean, this thing no. has moved many, many times throughout the day. Uh, I mean, I don't want to completely write off 25 while we're still up here, but um, it's possible. I see stuff on the scanner here, but I don't necessarily see great setups or anything. Maybe GM on a move back to the view app. That's only 26 cents away, though. 
Pixel Works still holding that view up. Maybe we'll see if there's another move in there. Nexi, we already know about Nexi here. That actually might be making another move towards 20s on Nexi. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to get into that one, though. Nexi's definitely a get your popcorn sort of move. That's that's fun to watch. <laughs> Put the 3D glasses on and everything. It's like it's coming right at me. Speaking of 3D glasses, had a 3D glasses on Ratatouille yesterday, and sometimes on that ride, they uh, they fling water at you when they do the mop bucket part. And <laughs> got right in my mouth, dude. It's like, ugh. oh, oh, I, I remember uh, that when they had uh, what is it? A, is it a Bug's Life or or a, yeah, it's a Bug's Life, right? They had a ride like that where it was like some kind of uh, theater, and they had that effect of spraying water. That was a surprise. I was not expecting that. I was like, oh, God. There's it's kind of nice, though, on a really hot there. summer day when you're cooking and you finally get on the ride and there's water. But when it's yeah, yeah. a little chilly, not so welcome. Rewind that scene again, please. Douse me with water. It gets really hot and dry out there sometimes in California. Well, you you uh, you go to uh, Epcot, right? Yeah, this one's yeah, Epcot, yeah. yeah. Am I and M getting called by Smoke Tuna here? You know, guys, you guys don't mind me talking about it real quick. It's awesome. They, I showed Ryan. They had this dude just rocking the harp. I mean, I've never seen somebody. Uh, I've never seen that either. <laughs> it was insane. It was, it was pretty cool. Almost made me want to go buy a harp. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get harp lessons? I don't know, but I did buy the yeah, new guitar pro. Know. Have you ever uh, seen or used Guitar Pro, Ryan? No, what is it? Uh, it? It'll show you the fretboard and the tablature at the same time, and you can slow it down. So it'll show you exactly you know, your finger position for each mm, song. I should try that. I, I should Maybe that'll make a difference. I can't play guitar to save my life, but I think it's really cool, and I've always wanted to. Maybe I should try Guitar Pro. That's how I learned the solo in Fade to Black. Fade to Black? I think it's Fade to Black. Uh, do we have a view at the lucid top? Um, no, I mean, I would imagine that this is going to find some resistance at four. Uh, I do have on the daily chart, um, on the daily chart, I do have 395 as that 50 day moving average value. So likely has some, uh, a resistance there at 395. Um, levels above that, I've the 100 day at 445 and the 200 day at 569. So I'd be looking at those levels here. You might also get a little bit of resistance right in that 364, 365 area on Lucid. Um, but that's about all I've got for potential upside targets there. Strong, lean, agile, holy fit. That is a great handle. Let's go. So, <laughs> no. Not much, guys, but I decided to take some profit on that short on the spy or uh, the futures again. Uh, twice short, twice uh, two two winners. I'll take it. Crassy, Apple next leg lower here. Sorry, thirteen. It's all right. Uh, Crassy was just uh, saying he's debating with himself on whether to keep QCOM on through earnings. Um, so I have QCOM. Uh, I'm probably not doing the same trade you're doing. I intend to hold this for a year or more. Uh, but it had run up since the time I bought it in October so much that I did take a little bit off the table uh, per my rule. And uh, now I'm just letting the rest run. Uh, so I can see your point about how it could come back in uh, off earnings that are less favorable or just profit taking. Uh, but I don't know what your time horizon is. If you're looking at longer than a year, then I still think this is uh, going to be a great company to hold in the long term. But short term, this is probably a good, good profit taking area, if not a few days yeah. ago. Have you guys brought up HP today? No, I haven't uh, taken a look at it at all. Packard, that's something else, isn't it? No, it's yeah, HP, Helmer, no, and yeah. Payne. Helmer and Payne. HP, uh, Hewlett Packard is HPQ and HPE. Oh, uh, okay. And what's going on with you this? know what I'm gonna do? You, you know, we I just got so I got fooled because I got asked to change the watermark to the ticker instead of the company name. But I have an even better plan. I'm going to change the watermark on a different chart to the name. So now I have both on the screen. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to use big brain out here and try and uh, fix this up. And if you guys want to see something really ridiculous with only 363,000 traded, just look at PEPG, Hefgen. 
There we go. PEPG. Buy rate holder. Probably a lot of bag holders in this uh, that have not been alerted to the price being up just yet. Netflix at the lows, by the way, here, folks. And NVIDIA, we talked about NVIDIA trading lower a little bit earlier. That actually set a new intraday high and is coming back to the VWAP on NVIDIA. Um, Jonathan Cooper mentioning that Pixelworks PXLW here knifing. So that actually broke beneath the VWAP and falling out of bed here. Pixelworks, that trade might be over. We'll see if that firms up for maybe an afternoon trade here, but Pixelworks moving lower here. Can I... Uh throw out a uh, an idea uh it's, it's you know not really a trade it's more of a just a consideration for a long-term uh, investment uh, but you know how uh we've been talking about uh, lockheed martin uh, yeah. raytheon and, and uh, defense stocks yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so there's one that we haven't really talked about and i think it's important that we start doing that because it, it could get a lot of uh orders a lot of work soon uh that's huntington ingalls industries they're the ship builders what's the, the ticker hii So what's yeah. the thesis here? These are shipbuilders, huh? This is the ship. This is the shipbuilder for okay. the United States Navy, and it's got a it's got a pretty good looking setup, um, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot more orders coming in, especially if we're going to continue to decoupling from China. We have all these other uh, different regional issues happening throughout the world. And I think that because our fleet is now, you know, there's there's a whole other argument to be made about the, the fleet size here in, in, in terms of uh, size and strength. But uh, they do have a smaller number size than uh, than China does. I think you might see some more shipbuilding happening uh, sometime mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, so I'm just trying to put this on people's radar because this is the company that actually builds the Navy's ships. Okay, that, you learn something every day that I was not aware of. Thank you, 13. Is that H-I-I? Yes, H-I-I, Hotel India, India. Uh, folks, it is 1048 here. We're actually going to be signing off here a little bit early, 1055. Stick around, though. We do have all access, or excuse me, we do have Benzinga Live today. We're going to be talking earnings previews, fitting week to be doing that. And, of course, we have Powerball after that with Luke. So be sure to stick around. We got another seven minutes here to figure out whatever we can make some money off of. Or figure out how to what not to lose money on. Yeah, yeah. figure out how to play defense, or just what to what to watch, what to break out the cop uh, the, the popcorn and three D glasses uh, out for. You know, the, the thing that's cool about the popcorn and three D glasses is it's safe for my account. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, uh, CDLX is is looking like it might try to make another push. Yeah, right. is, maybe it takes that high out there 13 we need some more volume in this but it's got a, it's got the setup uh working for it right now tempted to short the market again but i'm just i'm just failing to see why this thing would not beast out to a whole new high richard saying thanks for the help guys awesome show you are more than welcome you're the one pressing the buttons you're the one taking the risk so good job executing glad we uh helped your morning be a better morning here today yeah you guys are great man thanks so much for inviting me yeah no problem thanks for, Love thanks having for you here, man. you're always you're always uh you're always available i always learn something from you too i like that pain teaches us lessons <laughs> <laughs> I, I i cannot understand this uh this market We're, we did we need to make new highs all-time highs in the spy today no this matter of sense short. Jonathan, I have no idea for this. Ryan, question. Why do you think GBTC fees are three or four X the others? That must be on purpose to cause selling pressure. I have no idea at all. I couldn't even make a guess on that, man. I'm sorry. So what 491.36 is the high, right? Oh, for a spy? Hold on a second. I took my chart off that. Um, the high I have is uh, 491.42. That's the all-time high. And then today we got 491.36. And and basically, guys, for that strangle I was telling you guys about earlier, it's all about having a big move. It doesn't matter uh, which way it moves. 
It can move up or down as long as it moves big and it doesn't consolidate throughout the whole day before it, and even at that point, it can make a big enough move, move to recover. Here goes CDLX, still low volume, but it's it's pushing. So a lot of times I'll get stuck out in the middle of the, the like jungle here. I guess you call it a jungle because that's what it looks like <laughs> and not have any any uh, signal. So I, I got to have a, a position that I'm not just going to get crushed, you know, if uh, the market starts going crazy. Yeah, and to your point about needing enough volume to make the move that we're looking for, it's, it's looking like that with CDLX. Unless the volume comes in to make that push up through this uh, level that we just uh, got to about... Mm. 865, eight, uh, you know, 864, that area. We do need that volume in order to get through some of these uh, sell orders so we can get go higher. It's something that everybody, I think, needs to consider when we're looking at these setups. Uh, if we don't have the volume, we not, might not get that push through. So it's we need to all about through. the volume to me, 13. I will second that any day of the week. Jay mentioning IBM, the OG AI play, putting in new highs. We talked about uh, IBM. We've talked about this one a number of times here on the happy hour. This one been a great trade here. Uh, new highs on the day. This actually looks like a possible island formation here. We'll see if IBM can trade up and take out 200. Take a look this at was, some of those calls here real quick. This was the AI yeah. play that everybody forgot about. Yeah. Then that PEPG, it uh, halted and busted out to a new high, and it's still only 400,000 traded. So, Pep Gen. Yeah, still not seeing ITRM do that uh, that big move that I was hoping for. Nexi's uh, flagging, it looks like. Oh, I had the wrong. I had the wrong screen up here. I'm sorry, folks. It's two things I like to remind myself, though, before I get into a trade. Um, respect the range, um, not just looking at the at the setup, like I said, but also, I mean, I mean, there's just tons, but like making sure that volume's there. I don't know, guys. I'm uh, losing losing my train of thought, though, looking at the spy. But anyways, just trying to make sure that we add extra criteria instead of just looking at that one little piece, you know, going and making a decision off of it. Because this this is a it's a tough world, and we make it tougher when we when we only make our decisions off of a small amount of data. And I'm guilty of that, especially with the chart uh, timeframes, right? I sometimes get tunnel vision. I get locked into a specific time frame, and I don't, I don't look to the left effectively and take data from some of the other charts. All right. Um, Folks, again, that we are that is going to do it here for today for us. Sorry, I have to end it a few minutes early here. We are going to be back at this again tomorrow. Um, but remember, should be sure to uh, check out Benzinga Live coming right up here. Redirect already set. You don't need to do anything. Earnings previews and then Powerball with Luke, 13. And Andy, any final words for the day here? It's been a good time, guys. Look forward to seeing you next time. And yes, Andy, everybody. can't wait to have you back. Thanks, man. Everybody, everybody. Chat. Thank you so much for everything that you do and putting out some of these uh, names that are going. You're just as much of a help to me as I think I am to you. I can I can confirm. So you guys are the absolute best. We will see you around. Take care, Andy. Take care, 13. Folks, stick around for Benzinga Live and Powerball. Have a great rest of your day. Stay green, and we'll see you tomorrow.